All right. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to um, a little bit of normalcy here in astrophysics. We're going to return to our content today. And today we are going to talk about what I think is one of the most interesting parts of this entire course, although I probably say that every unit. Um, and that is the life and death of stars. And the first thing that is perhaps most interesting about that is the simple idea that stars have a life and a death. Um, for the majority of human history, people have been looking up at the sky and seeing stars and seeing them as sort of just permanent, infinite fixtures in the sky. And in fact, the same constellations we're looking at today are the very constellations people were looking at many centuries ago. And so indeed, the stars do seem like permanent fixtures. But of course, as we've talked about, um, Every now and then, a new star shows up in the sky, what used to be called a nova, which we now know is when a star explodes and produces so much light and energy that it's actually visible as a new star in the sky for maybe a few days and then eventually fades out. And for the longest time, of course, people didn't know what that was. Today, we know exactly what that is, and that is a star dying. But not all stars die that way. And as some of you probably know coming into this course, and as I may have mentioned earlier in the course, um, it is that very type of explosion, what's called a type two supernova, um, that makes our existence possible. So indeed, it is the life, uh, but more importantly, the death of particular types of stars that allow you and I and the planet we live on to exist at all. And so that's what we want to understand over the next couple of weeks is what is the connection between the stars in the sky and our lives here on Earth? And of course, we're not talking about astrology here. We're talking about astronomy and actual science. So let's dive into it. Um, so the first thing to recognize is that when we look up at the night sky, in fact, I'm going to go back a slide here. When we look up at the night sky, we see lots of stars up there. And some stars appear brighter, some stars appear dimmer. And that's probably what we notice most is that some stars appear bright. Maybe they look bigger. And some stars appear dimmer, and maybe to our eyes, they look smaller. If you look even closer, you can probably tell that stars don't all have the same color. Now, in fact, you can look at the image on the screen here, and you can see that some stars are maybe a little more blue in color, some stars maybe a little more yellowish red in color. And that is a very real difference that you can see with the naked eye. And today, we're going to talk about exactly what that difference means. So the first thing to recognize is the simple fact that not all stars are just like the sun. The sun, of course, is a star, but there are many other stars out there that are much brighter than the sun, much dimmer than the sun, much hotter than the sun, much cooler than the sun. The sun is sort of a middle ground star. And so just to give you a sense of some of those differences, we'll actually compare the sizes of different types of stars. So if you look over here um, to the left of your screen, you'll see a picture of the sun, and then you'll see to the lower right a star called Wolf 359. This is what's known as a red dwarf star, and this is among the smallest type of star. These are stars that are much smaller, much cooler than the sun, and as we'll see later, much, much more abundant in the galaxy and in the universe than a star like the sun. And then if you look closely further to the left again, you'll see the planet Jupiter. That, of course, is the biggest planet in our solar system, but it's not that much smaller than the smallest stars that exist out there in the galaxy. So to some extent, we've mentioned this before when we talked about planets, this, uh, excuse me, Jupiter is kind of a failed star. It's a clump of hydrogen and helium, just like stars are, but it just never grew big enough to actually become a star. And we'll talk exactly about what it means for something to become a star as opposed to something more like a gas giant planet a little bit later. Just for comparison's sake, and I apologize for the fact that the word Earth is upside down, but there's Earth for comparison. Earth is about 10 times smaller than Jupiter and about 100 times smaller than the Sun. And when we say 100 times, what we really mean is 100 times smaller in diameter. Uh, by volume, you'd have to cube that. And so really um, about a million Earths could fit inside the sun. So as we compare sizes between other stars and the sun here, we're looking at diameter. So if you really wanted to take a look at volumetric size, you'd have to actually cube that number. So let's take a look at some stars that are bigger than the sun. So the first that we'll look at is Sirius. Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. And as you may remember, Sirius is in the constellation Canis Major which is to the lower left of Orion. 
Sirius is about twice the diameter of the sun. And you might think to yourself, aha, that's why it's so bright in the sky. It's a much bigger star than the sun. But of course, you know that's not entirely true because the sun is way brighter in the sky than Sirius is, but the sun's only half the size of Sirius. And of course, we know the sun is way brighter because it's closer. So you can already see here that just because a star is big doesn't necessarily mean that it is brighter to our eyes because distance plays a role too. And we'll come back to that later. So Sirius is certainly larger than the sun, but it is by no means one of the largest stars in the galaxy. So let's take a look at some larger stars. So for comparison's sake, you'll see right here um, where my arrow's pointing is Sirius. And then as we move upwards, we can actually see some stars here that are much, much larger than Sirius. So there's Pollux, which is one of the stars in the constellation Gemini. There's Arcturus, which is in the constellation Bootes, if you recall. And then there's Aldebaran, which you may recall is the eye of the bull in the um, constellation Taurus. And Aldebaran is about 40 times the diameter of the sun. So if you wanted to figure out how many suns would fit inside of Aldebaran, you'd have to cube 40, right? So 40 cubed, I'll let you figure that on your own. But that's how many uh, of the sun would fit inside Aldebaran. And again, just for comparison, you can see here's the sun in comparison to Aldebaran. So if you just imagine replacing the sun in our sky with this star Aldebaran in our sky, you would see a star in the sky that is 40 times the diameter of the sun, which would basically take up almost the entire sky. So it's a good thing that we are not orbit, right, orbiting around that star. Now you look at Aldebaran, you might think, wow, Aldebaran, that's a really, really big star. I mean, 40 times the diameter of the sun, that's huge. But it actually is nowhere near the largest type of star. So let's take a look at stars that are even bigger than Aldebaran. So as you look down here to the lower left of your screen, you'll see here's Aldebaran right here at the bottom left. And you'll see it is tiny compared to the other stars we're going to look at. So there's Rigel, which you may recall is the lower right foot of the constellation Orion. And then there's Betelgeuse, which is the upper left shoulder of the constellation Orion. And to our eye, Rigel and Betelgeuse look like they're about the same brightness in the sky, but they are nowhere near the same size in terms of being a star. Betelgeuse is so large that if you were to replace the sun with Betelgeuse, the outer edge of Betelgeuse would be out near the orbit of Jupiter, which basically means the entire inner solar system and pretty much the entire asteroid belt would all be inside of Betelgeuse. So um, we would not exist basically around Betelgeuse. And what's really interesting is that at the end of the sun's life, the sun is actually going to become a star that is more like Betelgeuse. It won't grow as large as Betelgeuse, but it will grow into what we call a red giant star. And that's what Betelgeuse is, a red giant star. And we'll talk later about what exactly that means. Now, another star you may be familiar with is Antares. Antares is the heart of the scorpion and Scorpius. And Antares is a little bit bigger than Betelgeuse and is about a thousand times larger than the sun. So remember, if you want to figure out how many suns would fit inside of Antares, you have to cube that number. So a thousand times a thousand times a thousand. And that, of course, is a billion. You could fit a billion with a B suns inside of Antares. Remember, you would fit a million Earths inside the sun. You could fit a thousand times that many suns inside of Antares. So Antares is truly an immense star. But it probably won't surprise you to know that Antares is not the largest star out there that we know of. I'm going to move my screen here a little bit so you can see these other stars. So we'll just take one last look here at stars and compare Antares to stars that are even bigger. So the largest star, at least among the largest stars that we know of, is here on the lower right. And that is VV Cephei. That is, of course, in the constellation Cepheus. And VV Cephei is even bigger than Antares. It's about twice the size of Antares. So it's about 2,000 times the size of the sun. And again, for reference, if you were to replace our sun with the star Antares, the outer edge of Antares would extend almost all the way out to the orbit of Saturn. So it would completely contain the inner solar system, all the asteroid belt, the orbit of Jupiter, and it would be out near the edge of Saturn. 
Um, so these stars are truly, truly immense, far, far bigger compared to the sun than the sun is even compared to the earth. So bottom line is, is that there are a great variety of stars that are out there, stars that are much, much bigger, stars also that are much smaller than the sun, but also, as you can see from the picture, stars that are different colors. And so what we want to understand today is what exactly those colors mean. Um, so that's kind of how stars compare in size to the sun. So now we're going to move on and we're going to talk about what exactly all this means.